Hi, I'm Clyde Salou Mushrari, and I am very happy to know that uh, many more of you continue to watch AMA videos, and we really appreciate uh, the time you take to watch our videos and, uh, more importantly, uh, give your feedback on what we're doing. On the 23rd of March 2013, AMA organized a community youth forum. This event was put together to try to give the community an opportunity to talk about the issues that matter. We know that uh, there are a number of issues that affect uh, uh, African Australian youth, and uh, these issues um, are quite serious issues that deserve to be given sufficient attention. And we believe that it is important as the leader, as a leading media organization in the community to provide the community an opportunity to canvass these issues uh, to the wider community and provide us uh, even more grounds to continue to talk to the authorities and uh, to continue to talk to the leaders and everyone else involved in trying to make a difference in the community to uh, give them the opportunity to address these issues. My name is Maximus Poe. I'm about 23 years old. I moved over to study and I would say most of the things that like 20 somethings, either we came here to study or we moved with our families, but there's a ongoing trend of us not having role models because we can compare and see, I can see how in Zimbabwe and watching South African TV, you'd be empowered because there would be black people on TV, there would be, you know, black news reporters, black shows with black characters and white characters and different types of races. And as a journalist writing, it frustrates me and working as a model as well, it frustrates you because they just don't pick you. You don't hear of jobs or they'll tell you you've already got one black person and that's enough. I'm worried about the girls that are younger than me, who they're looking up to and because they read Dolly magazine and even with a simple type thing of body type, an African girl, because she's got no positive role model, she will feel like have a low self-esteem because it's everyone's white, everyone is, has a certain, you know, white look. And I know friends that want to start up, you know, ways that we can get positive role models, but there's a big frustration that boys, girls, younger children, us as well, we can't get our foot in the door to work and there's no positive role models and why it's so, like we don't know why that's happening. Yeah, my name is Dominic. I would totally like to agree with my sister, but what she said is so true because most of us young, uh, these days, we actually, it's not because we actually do things because it's fun or we do all these stupid things because we think it's fun. It's because we have actually lost self of knowledge. Like she said, we watch TV, always, we don't see any black, uh, even advertised these days. There's nothing with black people in it. So what we think is, whatever we see on TV, we think that's the righteous way. So we're actually losing our identity to see who we really are, you know? So I really, that's a really good point, what my sister said there. And I think, reflecting back on what each of you said, I'd like to narrow it down to institutional racism. That's a, that, that's a, a major part affecting a lot of the African youth today in Australia. So we need to figure out ways that we are able to break that circle to move to the next stage of life. But with the, with the system the way it is, it's, it's very difficult. When you look at um, institutional racism, we take employment as, a, as, one, as one thing. You know, I, I've worked with a lot of um, young African men that come to me seeking employment and they go to another agency as a, as a referral for them to get, get um, employment. All they do for them is more like the way you dress, you need to lick that up, do a resume and thinking that's going to get them a job. It takes more than that to, to get employment these days. And also the, the way that the system is, is designed, it's not designed understanding, or it's not designed in a way that is cultural, culturally competent. It's designed in a way that is very narrow-minded, Western-focused, with a very mind that Australia is a very um, cultural, diverse place. And we, we, we've been having um, a lot of people settling in Australia since the elimination of the, uh, of the um, white Australian policy. And also bear in mind that um, indigenous people were the, uh, the first people on this land. So it's very difficult to try to put in a framework that is very Western without acknowledging the other cultural people that are in Australia. So that's what I, I mean by institutional racism. 
Another issue that I would say the youth face is free time and how to harness like their energy. When I was in Zimbabwe, I went to a private school, so it had the expectations were academically you had to be doing well, you had to do one cultural activity and you had to do one sport after school. So it kept you busy. You didn't have an idle mind. Even if you had, uh, you came from a chaotic uh, household, which if you weren't doing um, sports, you may have fallen into drugs, but it kept you active, it kept you busy. I feel like, and even culture as well, like getting, not assimilated as such, but just the certain etiquette that I feel like my brothers and sisters just don't know because they just haven't been given, like they haven't been told but then automatically the white people are already groomed. But no one, there's, no, there's nothing in place for us to sort of keep us busy, keep us away from drugs, you know, keep us uh, entertained, keep us, yeah, like, because so, there's always like, there used to be people in Footscray that would just be drinking the whole time, and it's like, why, why are they there? Why are they idle? It's because there's nothing that's, they're not helping out in the community, they're not, they just, and do you expect yeah. uh, that sort of a, a thing to be um, attended to by the community, the government, uh, the, uh, the parents, or what, uh, how would you? I would think that it can be a community thing. So the government then gives funding to the community to have things that are set up because there's a couple of us that want to, I used to mentor girls here, Jungle City, and there were teenagers from maybe 12 to 16, and it was after school Saturdays and would dance. That was good and we'd have workshops and facilitate the boys and the girls and they would do maybe raps if they were interested in that or a couple of them were into sports and they would dance. So I think like more community to feel like we're part of the community and also just part of Australia as well. To feel like you actually, even if maybe you're not working but you're putting into your community, like you can see what you're reaping your rewards in a positive okay. manner. So I reckon the community actually has a big role here to play. You know, uh, when your student, uh, when your, uh, your child come home from school, you should be able to look down his books, you know, see what he's doing, how is he going with the progress, trying to keep his progress, you know, and trying to get him tutors, because most of the students, they're supposed to get tutors. You know, I think the community has a big role to play here. Um, like I said before, educating us, educating us of our self-knowledge, because if we know who we really are, we won't actually be falling behind in school. We actually will take control of our destiny, you know? Mm -hmm. you know usually, uh, when, when we look at issues, so African, African youth issues, we, we like to say, what is it that is wrong with them? You know, it, it doesn't matter whether it's, uh, whether it's an, an NGO, whether it's a school, whether it's, whether it's not. We look at their issues as what is missing? What are they lacking? What, what, what is wrong? What is it that is making them not fit in our culture? You know, just that view alone um, looks like it's innocent, but it's one of those with the most negative impacts on these kids. Everybody wants to know, do you know how we behave? What, what about me? I also have things. I have positive things to contribute to multiculturalism. The other example was I, I, I take my kid to uh, daycare about five days a week, and uh, usually my wife takes the kid. And then one day, um, I went to the center uh, carrying my kid, and there was a lady at the door uh, who was um, at the door with one kid on, 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 standing and that one in her arms. She was trying to get into the center. When she looked back and saw me coming, she, she opened the door real quickly and slammed the door on my face. I was like two meters away from the door. She didn't think I was going to bring my kid in that childcare. And I know the call, I know the security code to open the door. I opened the door, took my kid to the childcare, and when I was leaving, she came back and said, oh, I'm sorry, I didn't mean to be rude, you know. You know, um, see, uh, that you never know uh, what kind of people come to the childcare. What, what was there, what was the issue? The issue was, she thought I was troublemaker. I was a troublemaker, she had to make sure the whole childcare uh, building was secure from me, even if I had my kid. She didn't think about that. That was that assumption that I might cause trouble. She doesn't want to be the person who actually lets me in there.
What, what does that say about, about, about us? Mostly, we, we would like to think that issues, the issues that face African youth are African youth issues. But it's not. It's a general society issue. We need to make sure that we create awareness to create that curiosity so that somebody can say, how do you do this? And then people can ask themselves, why do I think how I do things is better than another way? Thank you. You know, rather than seeing people as a problem, they need to start seeing people as being people, rather than African people, they, they have problems in Daninong, they have problems in this area. No, they're not a problem. They, they're just people. Yeah. Another example is um, we, we didn't start receiving migration today in Australia. They, they, this is started for many, many years, starting from the Italians, the Greeks, the Vietnamese, and so on and so forth. What worked for this community, that can work for us today. That, that's one thing that I think we need to start focusing on as a nation in order to assist the lot of people after we've moved from the Africans, who knows, it might be the people from Afghanistan, Iraq, they might be the, the next in line, or even the Indians, as, as you previously um, mentioned as well. And also understanding things from a, from a trauma perspective. You know, a lot of the people that, that come to Australia uh, from an African um, uh, continent, some of them are refugees, some of them are skilled, skilled migration, and everybody that come here, come here for a particular reason. And everybody, even everybody sitting in this room has experienced trauma once upon a time in their life. So trauma it has a big impact on people coming here. You know, having to leave everything they ever knew and having to leave everything that they feel comfortable with coming out here and being forced to adapt into a the new environment, it, it's, very, it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's a big deal. It's okay. a really big deal. Thank you. Look, um, I know we know the issues. It's not... Uh it's obvious, but I would really love to hear from the young people themselves because that is one of the things that we are not doing most of the time. Um, as uh, community members or service providers, there is a tendency of talking on behalf of the young people instead of giving the chance to young people themselves you know, to voice out what their issues are. But one thing that I want to probably uh, say is um, I think there is also lack of role models. When I say lack of role models within the African community, uh, there are a good number of African Australians, you know, who have excelled and who, has really, who are really doing a really, really good job within Australia and in Victoria. There is no connection between these young people and those who would be mentors. So these young people need someone to mentor and to be role model, but there is no connection. We don't see that happening so often. So that's probably one thing because they need someone to look up to. In this country, in the past, what we've seen is there is a lot of negative media attention given to the African youth. Now, these young people, how do they feel? Because let's not forget that they are also struggling to find their place in this society. And every time, if they hear that negative you know, uh, uh, coverage about the young people, African young people, then what would they feel? How do they react to that? You know, that has a very you know, negative impact on them. So I would strongly say that the community, whoever it is, the African community members, they have to come up, you know, we have to come up with some sort of mechanism to support, to mentor, and to guide these young people. They are the future leaders. We have to lay the foundation. We are the first generation in this country. What have we done for these young people? Who are they going to look up to? If we don't show them something, who are they going to follow tomorrow? So I would say probably more like, you know, role models and more mentors mm. within the African community are needed for that. Yeah, uh, I quite agree with what you guys have all said. Uh, they are the issues really affecting uh, the young African. Uh, but one thing I would like to add is uh, it's a fact we are uh, young people are uh, not really understand the social responsibilities. We can actually blame them on the negativity of our uh, negative perception of the Australian society. But one thing we actually missing is how as well our young people need to learn, need to take their own responsibilities, or uh, whether in whether in under, understanding the institution or or the rule of law. Uh, and where that lack came from is uh, there's a connection between our uh, disconnection between parent and the kid as well. Uh, because we're not educating the kid, like, like for instance, if they encounter racism at the school, how would they react? Mm. Because one thing always on their mind is to do it by themselves, like either by fighting or taking any other matches. But as parent, if we actually educate our young people starting at home, like, like how would they react when they're actually facing all these difficulties, like when they encounter racism, 
this is the, the step you will need to follow, and this is you need to fight your social justice, but not through other means that would actually put them into more trouble. Because what happened, yet the young people will be disappointed by the institution, and then they will try to take action into their hand, which would end them into more trouble. Mm -hmm. and, and when that, and with that trouble, it would never stop. It would be part of the, would be part of the record, as we know. And from there, that's how they simply end up with nothing and have no, they have no future prospect. They see themselves as they're lost in the society with no one to actually guide them. So we need parents, like we need the community to actually educate a young kid. Like but I think they also need to be uh, support around um, the parents. Because, you know, obviously we come from a different countries and we have a way of living or teaching or educating or doing things. And that's different to where we're living in Australia. Mm -hmm. So I think support also needs to be um, around for parents or newly arrival refugees. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, it's... it's so you're saying in order for Quite the complex, parent, yeah. in order for the parent to support the, the kids, the parent themselves needs to be supported for that to, have to play that role. Yeah, they need to have understanding of how to function, you know, how to live in Australia. Yes. What what is illegal, what is legal? Because they don't have, I don't think they have that enough education in them for actually, um, you know. And also, there's some parents who've been through torture and trauma, so they're dealing with their own inner issues issues rather than. So it's it's more like. Do they have the capacity to mentor the kids? Mm. You know? yeah, that's, a, that's a fair question. One of the big dangers that we have also in the community, I mean, among youth communities, is the mindset of us against them. So, I mean, one thing also people need to understand is, yeah, it's true. I mean, we've, I mean, we've, we've come into a society. People do things differently. Instead of trying all the time, try to make people try to change things the way we want it to be, but we need also to learn to try to adapt ourselves to that society as well. Mm -hmm. Try to learn, I mean, try to understand how things work and try to imitate, try to learn in order to go forward. But even though I know I understand that there is also some issues like of stereotyping, people understanding how African things, how African do things, but that shouldn't be a reason for trying to stop people, try to learn how things are done in this country mm -hmm. and try to learn and do things. Because at the end of the day, they're stopping themselves, they're not stopping anyone else. So it's mm -hmm. true, like there is some work to be done to educate the mass society, like the mass population, about how Africans do things. Mm -hmm. But they also need to take some responsibilities of trying to move forward and and better themselves. Yeah. Uh, I'd just like to go back to like the society's like view, like the broader society's view of Africans is because like last week I had a conversation with my cousin in law, an Anglo Australian, and I was shocked because his wife is African, right? And even he had such a ignorant view of Africans in Australia, he's like, you know, I love my wife, I love this family, but you know, your, your community, I mean, you cause a lot of crime, you do this, you do that. I'm like, where did you, I asked him, where did you hear this? And he's like, well, um, I look on the news, it's working? Oh yeah, it is. <laughs> I look on the, um, he's like, I watch the news and the only time I ever see an African in Australia is there's some kind of crime or they're a refugee or something and they always just get stuff handed to them and they don't work. I mean, your family is an exception, but the majority, <laughs> and I'm like, but and 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 then I was just disturbed by this um, conversation, right? Certainly. All right. Thank you very much. Uh, so there's quite a lot of uh, work that needs to be done on the perception that people have. Yes. Uh, yes, ma'am. Uh, well, my name is Amira Malakin, and uh, I have done a master in education. So uh, first of all, uh, I just would like to know we've got a white Australian here. And um, since I come to this country, I'm not sure what is the term aggressive means in an Australian context. Because uh, this term has been used by some Australian uh, towards me when I ask for simple basic rights. So can someone here volunteer and answer what it means in an Australian context, aggressive? When I have been 
working um, and in a leadership role, I have also been accused of being aggressive. And so I think that maybe what you're encountering is not just, um, is something that many women encounter in Australia and it's a symptom of not expecting women to be in a leadership role. So instead of you being assertive, your behaviour is characterised as aggressive. Um, so that's one idea about it. You communicate in a such a professional manner and what you get at the end of the day, you are being aggressive. So if the school doesn't want, doesn't want to reveal incidents of violence happening to African kids and they end up in the emergency and the parents get uh, be responsible in the eyes of the law, so can someone tell me what sort of aggression it is when you ask for basic uh, things, such as incident report, when someone was almost rushed to an emergency, shut down, couldn't say, a kid of seven or 10 year old? 